to Mocklin and Sorn Online. Another beautiful day down here in Ayrshire. I'm out and about today 
doing a little visit to a local uh, attraction, uh, which is, well, a labyrinth. Um, sadly, it's closed. So I'm walking around the gardens of the house instead. But labyrinths, they're fascinating places really, aren't they? Uh, places full of choices. Will I go this way or that? Where will it lead me? Well, choices is what we're going to be doing. Uh, well, making a particular choice this week uh, because of course it's the Scottish elections here. And uh, certainly we want to be careful in that choice for the people who lead us. Now, of course, there are other lots of choices that we make every single day. And some of them are very minor. Uh, some of them actually can make quite an impact on our life. So careful how you make your choice. But there's another choice that perhaps we haven't thought so much about. And it's actually not a choice that we make, but a choice that's made about us. It says in the Bible that God has chosen us. He has chosen us to know him. He's chosen us to receive his love. And he's chosen us just to be able to know of his great blessings. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Well, we're going to be reflecting on some of that today in our service. So enjoy as we sing our first hymn, I Will Sing the Wondrous Story. From the Gospel according to John, chapter 15. Jesus is speaking. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. 
He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love one another. Amen. May God add a blessing to that reading of his holy word.
But what if we could love the way Jesus did? Passionately, faithfully, powerfully. What if the way we love could make a difference in the world around us? What if that love looked at everyone the way God does? A love which doesn't see the past, but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know Jesus. A love which is patient and kind, not envious or prideful. A love which puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger. A love which protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Do we love like this? Do we love like Jesus? Maybe it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better? Let us pray. Loving Lord, as we approach you today with our prayers, we acknowledge that you are the Good Shepherd, the God who guides and cares, the God who is concerned for us, his sheep and his lambs. Lord, on this day we give you thanks for the continuing good news concerning levels of COVID infection here in this country, whilst now also seeking from you assistance from for those areas of the world still sorely affected by its impact. In particular, may the people of India and Brazil find the relief that they seek. Continue to bless the work of vaccination in those countries and others, as globally we fight to contain this terrible disease. Today our hearts grieve with the news out of Israel of so many dead following a religious festival. Lord, tend, we pray, to the brokenhearted, the sorrowing and the hurting. Indeed, continue to soothe the pain of all who mourn. May their experience of you and their knowledge of your goodness and love bring much needed comfort. Lord, we bring before you at this point those of our own circle of family and friends as they pass through the dark places. May their fears find relief with your presence and may their uncertainties be countered with your words of encouragement. Eternal God, we pray this week especially for all who are involved in the Scottish elections. We pray for candidates, for officials and for the electorate in general. Guard, guide and help us all as we seek to choose our civic leaders for the coming days. Loving Lord, hear our prayers as we commend them to you in Jesus' name and as we now continue with his pattern by saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit. In his blood, this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Thank you. 
on my side Angels descending Ring from above Echoes of mercy Whispers of love This is my story This is my song today by relating to you a wee story. In this particular story, a boy asks his dad, Daddy says, if three frogs were sitting beside a pool of water and one frog decided to jump into the pool, how many frogs would be left? The dad said, two. Nope, that's wrong, said the youngster. Listen again. He said, there are three frogs. And one decided to jump. How many are left? The dad said, oh, I get it. If one decides to jump, the others would jump as well. So there would be none left. The boy said, no, dad. The answer is three. The frog only decided to jump. I never said that he did. Did you get that one? Well, perhaps sometime after the decision was made, the action followed. But naturally, first comes the decision itself. So for all of us, we would consider whatever we're going to have to make a decision about. Is it the, the right thing to do? Is it the right way to go? Does it make sense? Will it bring the benefits I, I seek for myself and for others? This coming week for all of us is an important one because we have an election to choose our representatives to the Scottish Parliament. Our first decision will be, do we participate in the election process? Now, it may well be that you really don't mind which individuals and which parties make decisions directly affecting you and others about taxation and health education and health and a whole lot of other issues and so you will leave that determination to others. Now that's certainly your right within the democratic system that we have. Though as a Christian I would want to suggest that using your vote 
to ensure that Christian values and Christian principles are supported and upheld are vital. Otherwise, we are potentially leaving the creation of laws and the exercise of power in the hands of those whose agenda might be quite different to those things that we hold dear. Now, I hope you'll notice that nothing I've said highlights any particular party or person, and that's deliberate. It's not my job to do that. It is, however, the job of each of us when making an important decision, and certainly one like this, to carefully consider the options available to us, to weigh up the pros and the cons as we know them, and to make our final choice based on our understanding what is best for ourselves, for others, but most importantly, what will ultimately bring glory to God. You know, over the years, I've spoken with many elected individuals from different political ideologies. And one thing common among them is a sense of gratitude that they have been chosen. Chosen by the people to fulfil as best they can their manifesto promises. I might go as far as to say that they feel a great sense of responsibility also to represent the aspirations of those voting for them. Decisions, decisions, choices. Now that's really at the back of what's going on in this passage in John chapter 15. Now the immediate topic appears to be about vines, but actually that's a metaphor, isn't it? Jesus is saying there, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word that has spoken to you. Remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Now the image that he is conjuring up is easy enough to grasp. If branches are to be infused with life, then they are to be healthy, they are to be growing, they are to be dynamic because of that. So they need to be properly attached to the source of what makes those things possible. Jesus says, okay, you are the branches and I am the life's giving source for your spiritual well-being. That's what all this talk about fruit is about. That's our well-being. That's us fulfilling our potential. And we'll achieve our fullest potential when we're connected to him. The question then is, how do we do that? Well, the text takes us to a place of decision linked with action. Jesus says, now remain in my love. And he goes on, if you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my father's commands and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Now the New Testament reminds us again and again of God's love towards us in Jesus and invites us to love him in return. It's a choice. We don't need to love him. We don't need to accept his love in our life. But there is great encouragement to do so because the benefits that go with it are immense. It's how we draw the spiritual nutrients which enable and enhance our life. Taking to ourself the goodness on offer involves a number of things. It involves keeping the commandments. That's the crucial component. That's the practical mechanism for living in the love of God. We take on board that which is good for us, beneficial for our being, for our positive existence also within community, which is where the direction to love others comes from. 
Now, we might not be growing vines around this part of the world, although I, I maybe I'll be wrong. But certainly all around us just now, there is vibrant growth going on. And we can see it clearly. We can see it, for example, in the branches of the trees as they're springing to life with colour and with new growth as they consume the richness coming from the parent plant. It's a really a wonder to behold. Just as it's a tragedy when we spot those branches which in some way become detached and have become the process of death and decay. This is not what our God wants, which is why we hear a word repeated some 11 times in this short passage. Remain. Remain in my love. Stay connected. Continue with me. Resist the forces that pull us apart and endure. Keep making the decision to connect to me, says Jesus. Go on following the commandments so that you can draw the lifeblood of righteousness, so that you can persist in loving others, so that you pass on the route to life and growth. Jesus says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This word God desires for us all, a life marked with an inner happiness, security and peace. Now all of that seems wonderfully straightforward. And then we encounter verse 16, which reads, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. Now, at first, this verse flies in the face of us making a choice. But actually, that would be incorrect. You know, there is within theological circles some debate about what's called election. Did God choose me or do I get to choose God? Well, from a careful reading of the whole Bible, we discover that it's not an or, but an and. Yes, we are chosen by God, chosen in Jesus. God chose his son to be the saviour. Jesus, of course, is the sinless one, the righteous one, the one in whom all goodness is satisfied. God chose Jesus to come and live and to die and to raise, rise again from the grave. And we are connected by faith to Jesus so that by that union we become chosen. Our free decision of faith grants us rights, privileges and blessings beyond our dreams. Our election in Christ should, I would hope, bring a sense of thankfulness and also a sense of responsibility to represent the aspirations of the one who made it possible for us. Yes, that we love as we have been loved, that we feed on his instruction and that we share the goodness we have found with others, that they too may grow and blossom. You know, in this week, and in all the weeks that lie ahead for us. Do think carefully about the decisions that you make. But crucially, be very clear about the decision that you make for Christ. It really makes an eternity of a difference. Amen.
Well, thanks again for joining us. And do you know, it really is an amazing thing to know that we have been specially chosen. That's how precious and how loved we are. So as you go away from here today, go with that encouragement and go with that knowledge that you are one of God's chosen and special children. So go and go with the blessing of Almighty God, the God who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit this day and evermore. Amen. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield to you. friend